Welcome to another video. I hope you're doing absolutely amazing. Today we'll take a close look at a overbought or oversold market. And I think everyone has better and worse times in the markets and understanding this can really help you understand uh, why that might be the case. I became more profitable when I had mechanical rules for when we are in the overbought market. So I hope this can help you uh, have a better understanding uh, for when you may have better or worse times in the market. Remember to backtest everything properly in this video and don't implement it right away. Before I dive in uh, to all of this, we need to make sure to spot a trend with at least one reaccumulation. So we need to have a change of character and we need to have one reaccumulation. Um, it's also possible to have uh, multiple reaccumulations, but uh, more on that later. When we have a trend, we can use the tool to check if we are overbought or not. In the last video, I introduced the 40% of a reaccumulation or redistribution. Um, and I use that with a Fibonacci to, to see if you have a valid change of character, but I also use it to see if you have, uh, if you have a valid trend uh, that's not yet overbought or oversold, of course. So I take my Fibonacci, measure it from the low to the high of a reaccumulation or redistribution. And I want to see the reaccumulation next um, to this reaccumulation to be at least 40%. So as you can see, all these reaccumulations are way less than 40%, but what I would like to see is a reaccumulation test at least 40%. So this was enough to continue the trend without being too much overbought or oversold. So another um, great way to look at it, the 40%. So say for example, we have a reaccumulation and the height of this reaccumulation would be 10 pips. Of course, it's way more, but just for the example, it would be 10 pips. Would like to see the next reaccumulation to be at least uh, four pips. So we now have the 40%. We also need to make sure that we have a reaccumulation. And when we form the next reaccumulation, I don't want to be any imbalance um, between the two. So I want every reaccumulation to be connected. So as we see in this example, everything is connected and that's what we will use for the, for this example. We can also see, uh, of course, a trend of reaccumulations that aren't connected. And so there's imbalance in between. And for that, I also have different mechanical rules, but that's for a uh, different, uh, for a different video. So when we have our imbalance, so we are only going to look at the first one. So everything is connected. We talked about a 40%, but of course, as we see in the real mark on GPUSD right now is we didn't get the 40% quite yet. So when we take our Fibonacci again, and we see, uh, we draw it from uh, this high and we see we never came to the 40%. So this means that we have a trend that's really getting a lot smaller compared to the first big reaccumulation. And I mark it when it's not 40%, I mark with a down arrow. So I know um, we didn't get a great pullback. And what you see most of the times is we form some liquidity or we have RSI divergence and you can, can combine these two together to get a, a real sense of when a market is overbought or oversold. So as you can see, we have multiple reaccumulations after the first one. And you can label this as liquidity. So the liquidity can be another part of the um, overbought, oversold picture. Uh, because it, give, it gives you another indication that it is more tricky to continue to buy and we can use another uh, indicator and that's the RSI divergence so the market goes up and the RSI goes down it does not mean that that the market needs to reverse but the chance of it um, going to reverse increases to take some liquidity for example and to continue to go higher so now i have a great uh, idea of how geo looks um i think it's 
also great to look at your USD because it has kind of, kind of the same um, mark structure. Um, in this case, we have more, multiple reaccumulations and we can see that everything is connected and at least 40% of the reaccumulation um, prior or bigger. So you see everything is connected. There's no imbalance in between uh, the reaccumulations. So everything is fairly balanced. Um, we have to look at the last uh, reaccumulation. So we take again uh, the Fibonacci with a 40% measure from the high and we see the pullback didn't come to the 40% and we made a new high. So we broke structure again. And we can break structure again uh, next week. But we can see we have a very nice trend line liquidity forming. And when we go to the high time frame and look at the RSI, we can also see that the market goes up and the RSI goes down. So you might ask, okay, very nice that I know the market is overbought or oversold, but why do you tell all this? And that's what we are going to discuss right now. For me, I had a few losses a while ago and it really clicked when I started to look at uh, exactly what I just told you in the last couple uh, of minutes. And I came to the conclusion that my trading plan doesn't quite work the same when we are in this kind of condition. My win rate really plummeted after, um, after we are in a uh, very overbought or oversold uh, market. So what I started to do is back this, uh, these markets and I changed my trading plan according to if we are in an overbought market or if we are in a trending market without being overbought. And I have a different trading plan for these conditions in an overbought market because the market acts different in my case. So I heard a couple of you and I got a couple of DMs on Instagram that you had a very uh, bad week or a couple of weeks and we are exactly in this spot on AU and GU. So I think it might be wise for you to also backtest uh, these markets with your trading plan and see if you can spot a difference in how your results are in these types of markets. Because for me, it was a very big difference, not only for the continuation, but also for trading a possible uh, pullback. So I had to change my trading plan for overbought and oversold markets. And now I have a win rate that's really nice in these types of markets. So I think it's really, um, really helpful for you if you backtest this, uh, if you backtest this and see if you spot any difference for yourself and maybe change your trading plan uh, for these types of markets. So you don't have that much losses um, and you can increase your win rate. I hope this can be helpful for some of you and this might be the reason you have some uh, very bad weeks or months because with trading the most important thing is where and when you are somewhere in the market. So if you had a bad week or some bad weeks, make sure to back this, this very properly. Now I hope you found a valuable breakdown because this was it for today and I hope to see you next time. If you want to learn more about my trading style, you can watch this video.